Very warm greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now let us turn our Bibles to First Peter, sorry, Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Now we must not forget the reason why we are studying this particular memory verse. Ultimately, the Christian must remember that while we are on earth, we must grow. Like we learned in camp, if we don't grow, we will die. If we don't grow, we will backslide, we will fall. And there will be great consequences. And the worst consequence is that we will put the name of Christ to shame. As we've studied also on Sundays, will we deny God? In order not to deny God, we must make sure that we keep growing. So turn to Second Peter. Now look at verse number nine. Please remember verse eight and nine. If for if these things be in you and abound, all the things that we memorized, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Let us turn to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for safe journey to thy house. Lord, indeed, it is your mercies, your goodness that has kept us safe on the road. And we pray, Lord, that even as we come, you would search our hearts, show us our sins. For Father, we want to confess of them. Lord, cleanse us and wash us in the blood of our Saviour that this night of gathering to seek your face, to seek your help in the place of prayer, Lord, we will not be hindered by any sins. And Father, we pray now that you use your holy word to help us to grow, that we may ultimately make sure that our lives will bring you joy and bring you glory. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been learning about temperance, right? Now, remember, we, we talked about this, and I think the one way to do this is to make it very big. Whoa, too big. The Christian, in order to grow, now must have, must have this set of things that you add, all right, to your faith, to your faith, there is virtue. Yeah, thank you for telling me. <laughs> right? Virtue. And then you have a knowledge. Then you have a temperance. Then we have patience. Right? Now, if these things are not added in the sequence, your growth will be stunted. So this tree trunk will just end here. But if the Christian continues to add, and not only that, the Christian adds in abounding amounts remember we read for if these things be in you and abound so is it keeps growing so your virtue your knowledge it grows they abound your temperance they abound your patience now if you yeah your patience abound now if the christian not only miss out elements of it but if this is not abounding each one is not abounding you will also not grow well ultimately I think this is gonna be like really big now ultimately what we want is this huge growth right faith but sorry and each amount is in large amounts all right in large amounts and so on in large amounts it grows even more and every aspect is there then you will bear much fruit, correct? We say you will abound. So this is the picture. Why, I want to, why do I want to draw this? Because this is the picture that scriptures talk about. Adding, adding, growing, and fruitfulness, abounding. Now, then last week we studied temperance. What is temperance? Temperance, in one word, we can describe it as being, as enduring, right? Enduring. And remember we said temperance endurance in the bible in a few areas 
try to help you remember PTS. You know PTS? Post traumatic syndrome or sickness. Post traumatic sickness, right? Sufferings. All right? PTS. So this is in persecutions. This is in temptations. This is in sufferings of life. So the Christian must exercise temperance in all these areas. The word um, temperance is, oh, sorry, patience. The word patience is often linked to these areas in the Bible, and it talks about um, no matter how long time, no matter how long, um, no matter how difficult, all right, severity, no matter how difficult, however long and whatever it is, we must continue to endure. Endure is patience, literally means being remaining under remember this word it literally simply is made up of two words remain under stay under these situations keep your flesh under do not sin against god now so with that i said last week with this picture now we want to look at the individual aspects tonight let's learn about in times of sufferings patience in times of suffering the title tonight is growth Patience in times of suffering. Now, when the Christian go through the life, go through our lives, and even as you see in Scripture, God says, make sure you have patience because sufferings will come. And if you don't exercise patience, although you may have temperance, or you control yourself, you, you have self-control, 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 but at some point you will give up you will give up on the sufferings. So when, although you are exercising self-control, without patience, you will just end here. Or rather, you would end even before that, right? You will end here. You will just end here. That's it. Don't talk about the rest of the growth. Now, when we think about sufferings, what are some of the sufferings in life? Now, some of these things can be physical illnesses. And every Christian is going to face that, physical illnesses. The Christian must exercise self-control and you must keep enduring physical sufferings. It can be chronic illnesses. It can be unique kind of illnesses. Now, what if one day the doctor tells you that, I'm sorry to inform you, the x-ray shows that you've got cancer. Not only chronic but a very unique kind of cancer. Now, not only that, it is something that is terminal. Terminal. So you've been very self-controlled in your Christian life. You bear with a lot of things. Now, with that news, and the weeks, and the, and the years, and the months ahead, will you have patience or not? Or it may not be like that. Maybe some of us say, well, I'd rather have have cancer and then I'm going to die and then I'll just die and be over with. Now, what happens if that suffering is something that is a permanent disability? It's not, it's not severe, it's not chronic, but a permanent one. Maybe you go through life and you could be illness, then they say, we need to amputate one of your limbs, your leg, your arm, your hand. Or it could be because of an accident. Then you have this physical impairment for life. You could become blind in one eye or two eye. For the rest of your life, a permanent, permanent disability. How would you respond? Because such things can happen and do happen. Now, maybe the teens, you say, well, you know, these are things that don't happen to us. Now, please know that this can happen to you, young person. I've known in churches, I've known of Christians. doesn't mean just because you're Christians, you're not going to have this. There are many Christians who, are, who have permanent disabilities. Young people have chronic cancer in late stages. It's possible. The point is this. So young ones, you must still learn this because something may happen to you. And then are you going to have patience, endure under this situation? Well, of course, for the elderly, it's the same. In fact, for us, now I would say that some of these things, maybe I would use, yeah, right? So this is physical, physical, 
physical. Now, we know as elderlies, this body of ours will break down. God already says so. In the Bible, God says the outward man perish. Your outward man will keep perishing. It will deteriorate. You expect that. So some of these things can come. Now, not only that. So physical, now it can be, I would say, um, what about areas like loneliness? Loneliness. Difficult to bear. Could be loved ones pass away and you're the only one left behind. Now it could also be like in our current situation, COVID-19, lockdowns, restrictions. Maybe you feel that you can't handle some of these things. It's just so long. It's difficult. It's stressful on you as a person. Stressful, stressful on your body, stressful on your mind. When is this going to end? And then you realize that it has financial impact on you. So all these kind of things, and maybe because of that, there's family death. Well, eventually, every one of us is going to face some death of a loved one, right? Because of the physical sufferings, because of death, the body deteriorating and eventually die. So now we are going to face a lot of these things. So I would say maybe um, body and mind, right? Body and mind. Now, and these things spares no one in age. So you can be old, elderly. You can be um, young, if I said. You can be single. You can be married. All right? You can have a family. You can have no family. And it can also happen to a friend or a loved one. This kind of suffering. Now, and these things, these sufferings that we need to be patient under, Remember the time and severity. Now, these things can come. They can come suddenly. Now, remember all this because we are going to look at scriptures of things happening to people in scriptures and how, how do they go through it. So it can come suddenly. So young ones, please don't think that these things can't happen to you. I have friends who, at a very young age, they have some parts of their body amputated because of accident or, or illnesses or even being born, being born with certain um, impairments, right? It can happen. So young or old, um, now it can happen suddenly. Now it can be severe, very serious. Suddenly it is, it is um, something that will spread and become very, very painful, very terrible illness that can suddenly happen. Then... Now, it can stay. It can stay with you. Like I say, permanent disability. This thing happened and the doctor says, too bad. I think because of this, this will be a permanent um, feature in your life. It can stay with you. Now, we also have to be ready that it can strengthen. Strengthen, meaning that sometimes sufferings, now, certain illness or certain problems in life, it can grow worse and worse. And then you sit there and your, your heart is so troubled. Can you have patience to continue? You say, you mean this, this thing is going to be with me? But I'm only 20 years old. You mean this thing is going to get worse and worse and worse when I'm 30, when I'm 40, when I'm 50? It will strengthen. They say, yes, I'm sorry. It's going to be like that. Or it can be something that is Sure. Sure, sure means like actually all of us must realize that physical sufferings because of the breaking down of body illness is sure. Well, unless the Lord takes you home before you have that kind of suffering because of an accident or something, yeah, you may not have contracted. But, the, but we can be sure. The point is this. All of us sitting in this room, whether you are very young, you can be sure that one day you will have physical sufferings and you must learn about patience. You must be prepared, in other words. Now, with all this, now these are the what? What? The what of suffering. Now, another th then we must ask ourselves, now how, how do I go through all this? How can I have patience? 
How can I have patience? How should I think? Why is this happening? The Christian must not fall into this um, error of saying, well, we will never fall sick as when we become Christians. God already says the body will deteriorate. God gave many examples in the Bible that the people fell sick. His apostles had illnesses in the body, right? So now when all this happened, now the question is why? Now look here. Remember, the Christian, when you memorize the word add, all right? Add to your faith. Add to your faith, virtue. Then add, 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 add. Now what, what is add? Now who remembers? I hope that you remember. What is the meaning of the word add? Um, Aaron, do you remember? Fantastic. Choreograph. Choreograph. The Greek word for add is how we get the English word choreograph. Now, choreograph means this whole growth must be choreographed. Choreograph is like you're choreographing a, a, um, a dance performance at the National Day or you're choreographing a big, huge symphony. Choreograph means you cannot think that, oh, now it's just this part, I'm just focusing on this part. His hand is going there as well. Means you have to make sure every part is happening. Otherwise, suddenly at one part, everyone's supposed to be still playing, but one whole section of the symphony is quiet. So choreograph means everything is happening in parallel, simultaneously, and all, and all of them are making the right sound and growing, okay? So why do I want to say that? Now, in order for us to, to have patience or any part, it must be choreographed. In other words, for example, your knowledge must be there. The knowledge must be growing. If you want to have patience, your knowledge has to be growing as well. Your temperance has to be growing, but your knowledge must be there. Why is it important? Because we ask, why? Why do I have sufferings in this life? God, why did you let this happen? Now, if you are not clear about this knowledge, you are not going to be patient. Because after some time, you feel that I don't have answers. I will just give up. Then you begin to bring God's name to shame. So now the why, the why, the why. Actually, why? Why do you think God allows illnesses? Jemima. To strengthen our faith. Yes, all right, to strengthen our faith. Um, why else? Um, John Siombing. All right, very good to realize that our life is just temporal, so we be careful that like we learn in camp. Now, but one of the things that we must realize, and now I'm going to show you some Bible verses. Tonight we need to cover a lot of things. That's why I am printing out the verses. Now, normally I want you to turn to your Bible, but today I want us to realize one thing. Now, look at John 11:14. 14. Jesus talked about Lazarus. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. Do you know that God plans for illnesses? Before the foundation of the world, God already planned that, that Lazarus will have a certain illness that is so severe that he will die. Not unto death means, but God intended that through sickness, the sickness that Lazarus died from, this physical illness, it was unique. He's not old. He's a young man. It's unique. And yet he died. But Christ will resurrect him and perform his great miracle. But for the glory of God. God plans illnesses before the foundation of the world even for his glory. So the Christian, this one time it is definitely not wrong to say for his glory. It's very specific. God specifically said sickness for his glory. Is it true? How do we know that God plans illnesses into the Christian life? With that, it will help you to be patient. You must have this knowledge. Your knowledge must grow. Now, let us look at this. I want to put it up because I want to underline. We have little time. Um, quite a lot of prayer items tonight. Now, let's read together. Now, again, there was a day 
when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, and one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life, but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with saw balls from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd and scraped himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now, why do I want to bring up about Job? Because in the New Testament, in James 5, 10 to 11, now, James, you take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering in affliction and of patience. You want to learn about patience? Learn from Job, the Bible says. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and tender and of tender mercy. So that's why we go to Job, to learn about patience. What can we learn about patience in the case of Job? Now, a few things. Number one, we must know that God revealed this scene in heaven to help us realize that sometimes illness, certain terrible calamity happen in our life. It's not random that, oh, God lost sight and sudden and forgot to take care of you for that few seconds. Then you got into that accident. Or this illness that came to you, ah, oh, God forgot to, to look after you and that it happened. You caught COVID-19. Not at all. God is in absolute control. So Satan presented himself and said, now the passage before this, this is from chapter 2. Chapter 1 is almost identical. He said the same thing. Satan said the same thing to God. And God says, I allow you to go and take away all his physical goods. So this time, he came, Satan came to God again. All right? You realize it's, it's wonderful, right? Whatever Satan wants to do, he cannot do unless he has God's permission. So the lesson is, whatever sufferings we ha happens in our life, God permitted it. It is not Satan's power, it's God's allowing. That helps you with patience. Now, number two. This time he says, well, I, I, we know he lost his children, we lost, he lost all his property, his, his, um, his uh, wealth and everything. And now he says, well, Job is still obeying, fearing God. Fearing God. So you see, it, it brought glory to God. Because the first time Satan said, well, you know, Job is rich. You protect him. He has all these things. That is why Job glorifies you in his life. He obeys you. He follows you. He serves you. In other words, he glorifies you. So he, he, Satan wanted to, to embarrass God, to take that glory from him. But now he says, now if you make him suffer, this is physical suffering. Verse 4, Satan answered the Lord, yeah, you took physical things, but you know human beings are like that. You can touch their physical things, whoa, but when you touch their health, Oh, they will not take it. In fact, how he, he say? He say, you will not take it. He will curse you to your face. In other words, what is he saying? He will shame you. He will say, he, he will curse you to your face. In the Bible, to your face means it is, it is about the person's um, face, his glory, how he feels. He say, he will curse you to your face. He will not glorify you anymore. Skin for skin. 
when we have physical sufferings, number one, know that God allows it. It is God, not by chance. Number two, know that it is for the glory of God. Satan will want to say, now, get, when they are sick, look, how they behave now. Understand the scene that goes on behind, even physical suffering. Now, he, and he would use his, now, how, how severe was it? It was very severe. Suddenly, Job had balls from the tip of his to the base of his foot. Now, it is severe. It means he can't sit, he can't stand, it, even just sitting down is terrible. He, there'll be some balls somewhere. Showering will be ter terrible. He's in constant pain. And he took a portrait to scrape himself. So, I don't know, maybe he, he became so poor, he don't even have money to see doctors or what. But it's like that with him now. It's so terrible. You know, all the, the whole body covered with that. Is it severe? Yes. Was it sudden? Yes. Did it stay with him for a long time? Yes. But look at how Satan worked. Caused his wife to say, curse God and die. Curse God and die. That is the response. Why are you so patient, Job? You see, God says, learn from the patience of Job. Why are you so patient, Job? Just curse God. Why did he allow this? And then he said, and die. You know what's and die? Forget it. Just die. Why continue to endure? What's attacking the patience of Job? Now, Christian, when you understand all this, it helps you to endure. Helps you to endure. Now, is this the only case? We also know. Well, in the New Testament, in the case of Paul. Now, Paul says God gave him so much revelations. He can become proud. And then he says, unless I should be exalted above measure because of the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Again, a physical sickness, a physical ailment, a physical problem. And the messenger of Satan buffeted me. Means it was very painful. It was very difficult. Buffet. Beaten. It's like in a boxing ring. Knocked, knocked black and blue. Very, very painful. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this I besought the Lord thrice. He prayed, God, remove it three times. And this is where we get the famous verse. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. God says, now, this is planned by me. I can remove it, but I choose not to. Don't feel that, why is this not going away? God has forgotten me and God is torturing me for, for, for his own pleasure. No, he says, now he says, I left it there for a reason. And I want you to know that my strength, because of this weakness in you, my strength will be made very clear. That is why Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I glory in, in my infirmities. There was no impatience after that. The moment a Christian understands that God is the one who allows things and this is for his glory, now he says, most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. What does it, what does it mean? means he will actually talk about his weakness, not to get pity, understand that, not to get pity. He, in fact, wants people to know I am very weak. Whatever it was, something is an impediment of speech, something is a very poor eyesight that people mock him. Some say it is because he, he seemed to have a, a, a limp or he's, he's very short and very inconspicuous. Just, just some illness that people look down on him. And it was a painful thing. But he said, I, glor I rather glory in my infirmities. He wants people to know that I, Paul, is really weak, um, um, physically, uh, you, very um, um, useless, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What is he saying? Power of Christ, not power of Paul. Not, you know, Paul, I, Paul, am, I have this impediment, but you see, I still can preach so well, I can write so well, I am an apostle. No, he says the reason why I want people to know that I have this physical suffering, this physical weakness is it is the power of Christ that enables me to do all things. The power of Christ, not of Paul. What kept him so patient, 
So patient until he embraces it and he would keep wanting it to remain there because Christ, they will know, wow, you know, in this kind of situation and Paul can do all these things through all his missionary journeys, the only explanation is the power of Christ. Illnesses are designed by God to bring glory to him. Once you understand that, you do not murmur, complain. Instead, you say, I, I'd rather glory in this. Please remember, I don't get illnesses and then go around and say, you know, I have this pain, I have that pain, that pain, a lot of pain, 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 pain. I have so many operations, you know, so many operations um, in my younger days. And look at me, I'm still okay. That is your own glory, your own pride. You're trying to say that you're physically very strong. You can go through all this. The more people see our physical weakness, when we behave in patience, when we behave patiently, they will see the power of Christ. Remember that. Then it was, you will say, I will carry on. I will carry on. So is it not true that Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God? Now let it make sure that it is not because of sin. If you continue and continue in sin and God is chastising you with illness, this is not glory. There's nothing for you to glory in. Quickly repent. Quickly repent. Now even for the case of Peter, who, is, who wrote all this, Jesus Christ told him, you will die a martyr's death. Remember the sure? The sure? It is going to happen to you. Now how would you feel if you were Peter? That in your younger days, someone tell you, well, you, you, have this, you, you are going to suffer this sickness and you are going to die a very painful death. You already know from young. That is Peter's case. For his is, is martyrdom. For you, it may be a doctor giving you a certain report. How do you feel? Peter is the one who says, at patience to temperance. He's the one who knows that he will surely suffer a very painful physical death. But he's the one who says, make sure you have this because then you will have a lot of fruit in your life. Now then, we move to this last part. Let me see. I covered all the verses. All right, back to here. Now, you ask then, we know the why. Because of knowledge, now we know the why. We know the why, okay? We know the why. The why helps you. And if you're driven by the chief end of man, which is to glorify him and to enjoy him forever, means you, you, now you understand that God allows these things and it can glorify him, it will glorify him, unless you and I respond wrongly. Job responded rightly at that point of time and Satan was shamed, right? Satan was shamed. So every time you go through that, remember this picture. But now, what is this purpose of growth? Now turn back to 2 Peter, please. 2 Peter. We read earlier on 2 Peter. Now chapter 1, verse 8. Now, he talked about you won't be barren or unfruitful. So it is about growth, growth that brings glory to God, correct? Now, if you turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17, uh, verse 18, that is our memory verse. Now, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For what purpose? For what purpose? Why do you want to have patience so that you will grow and be fruitful and not be barren? Why? Why? Because, look at our memory verse, to him be glory both now and forever. Growth is for the glory of God. Not for you to go through life and be able to endure life. Now look up here. Patience. When we learn all these things. Patience. Patience you want to have patience in your life to endure all these things in sufferings in life it is not so that lord if i have patience well you know at least i have peace in my heart you know i my life will be more endurable and all that no growth growth this growth to have all these things is to be fruitful 
And the fruitfulness is to glorify God. In other words, if I cannot string this anymore, now it is ultimately, it is ultimately the Christian when you bear fruit, you will shine. I don't know how to draw shine, right? This, I'm trying to tell you shine, all right? I'm not trying to delete things. Brightness, there's this brightness about you. And what happens when you go through all that? Remember, we had the case of Satan wanted to shame God. Now on earth, now when, no good drawing. Now when people, when people, when people see, when people see your fruitfulness, because you continue in patience and you grow, when, un, when believers see that, they will glorify God. When unbelievers see that, they will glorify God. How do we know? Now remember when we say fruitful, Fruitful. Maybe I'd open a new page. When we say fruitful, all right, I'm trying to use a drawing to help you to picture this and hopefully that stays in your mind in the rest of your life. Now, so people will see and they will glorify God, right? They will see, see your good works. The fruit of the Spirit, what are they? So you have all the fruit, all right? Wonderful, very fruitful. So we have Love, or maybe I use red. All right, so we have love. All right, you say love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and meekness, and say again, say again. Faith, meekness, and temperance, right? Faith, meekness, and temperance. We saw temperance also. So now you have this in you. But if you do not have patience, you don't exercise patience and continue. Once you don't have this P. Now, how, how? Now you say, how can I show patience that will not shame God? When you don't have patience, what will happen? For example, illnesses. What is the most common thing that happened to elderly and even young people when you have a certain illness or very severe thing that happened to you or you're in pain? What do you think? Well, simple. Impatience, right? Impatience. You will lose your temper. We studied this at the Seniors Fellowship, right? Now, remember, ultimately, all this is for the glory of God. Seniors, I hope you remember, illnesses are part of God's plan in your late life to bring glory to Him. How? How? When you have patience, when you have patience, you won't be impatient. You won't lose your temper and become a grumpy old man, grumpy old lady at home, among your friends, to the point where people, when they see you, when they see you, they run away. Your children avoid you because of your very sour spirit, because of physical ailment. Now, is physical ailment, especially severe ones, and when you're old, is it very difficult to bear? Yes, but it is because it is so difficult to bear and you show patience. They will say, how can so-and-so, how can mom, how can dad, how can grandma, grandpa, how can they tolerate this? How can this Christian elderly man or lady tolerate this? My, my pain is not even close to her, but look at her joy. Look at her peace. Look at her long suffering. That is what Paul is saying. The more severe this is, and the more they see that I'm capable of the opposite, they will see the power of Christ residing on me. It is patience is not just to help you be able to well take things in life and tolerate things in life. No, it's to ensure that every time you want to lose your temper, say, I must be patient because if not, I will not show forth the fruit. That's the purpose of patience. That's the purpose of growth. I will not show forth the fruit of the Spirit and therefore I will not glorify God. Patience. Now besides losing temper easily, you become nasty, grumpy, as I've mentioned. I think it's very sad when people avoid you because you're sick. Sometimes it's like that at home. You become a bad testimony to your children. To your grandchildren. Now, next one. What else? Love. Remember love, joy, peace? Love. Love. 
When you have patience, it means this. You bear the fruit of love, you won't become self-centered. You won't become self-centered. Instead, even in suffering and difficulties, you will continue to be outward, going outward. That's why later on you have charity, you have brotherly kindness. You will continue to not be so inward and just in misery and looking in and expecting people to serve you, to care for you, to, to pity you. But instead, you are giving still, giving. Now, that is the example of Christ. Christ, when they caught him, he told the people, let my disciples go. He was going to be crucified. His, what was on his mind? My disciples, safety. When he was on the cross, you know how painful it is on the cross? We described that before. It's indescribable, severe pain. Now, most of us in a little bit pain, cut the finger a little bit or sprain the ankle, we want everyone to give us attention, do everything for us. But Christ was in severe pain. What did he say? Please, John, look after this lady, my, my, my earthly mother. Who was he thinking about? Love. He said, make sure you take care of her. Christ on the cross told the Father, Father, forgive them. He was in severe pain, but his mind was always love. So Christian, when people see that you are like that, instead of behaving in the opposite way, it is only possible, they will say, it is only possible because of the power of his God or her God in his or her life. That must be the case. How else do you explain? We are not like that. Why is this person like that? The glory of God because of patience and therefore you grow and you bear fruit. Now what else? Faith, you will show that because of your patience, they will say, this person really trusts, really trusts in, the, in his God's love, goodness, and that his God will never do anything that is evil to them. And even if something happens, they can see that. They can see that. If you murmur, complain, and like what, Job, uh, what Job's wife, which is um, um, also Satan's, I'm thinking is curse God. Curse God means start to um, complain against him. Curse him and die. No more faith. Let me just die. Instead of trusting that God has a purpose, I just patiently continue to glorify him. Have you read the recent um, government ruling, euthanasia? Right, young ones, you know what's euthanasia? Euthanasia. All right? Now, you, you in Greek is good. Thanasia comes from thanatos, Greek word means death. Good death. Good death. Because go and die. Give up. Don't have faith. Euthanasia. Euthanasia is basically a cis, well, Euthanasia's definition is, um, let me I try to copy down to make sure, intentionally ending life to relieve pain and sufferings. We're learning about sufferings, right? Intentionally ending life to relieve pain and suffering. So you're in pain, you're in suffering. I don't want to take this anymore. I can't take this anymore. Now, this is basically intentional ending of life. This is different from you are very ill um, and you come to a point where you say that there's nothing medication can do anymore. I'm going to die. This is saying, no, you tension means you, can you inject something into me to stop me from suffering anymore because I want to die now. It is not, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I will die eventually, but I will continue to bear this and bear God's will and suffer. And throughout that, I will still be joyful, thankful, praising Him, loving others. Euthanasia is basically assisted suicide assisted suicide. Now look here. I can't take this physical suffering of mind and body anymore. That's why some commit suicide. I can't take it anymore. I just want to end this. I don't talk to me about patience. I don't care about the glory of God. I don't care about faith. 
I don't care about peace. Just kill me. Or just, I want to die now. So that is the end aim of Satan. Curse God and die. Reject his will. Be angry at God. Be upset. That way, you will never glorify him. Better still. And die. Just say, I want to end this. I don't want to have patience anymore. So, Christian, I hope that tonight you understand. You understand the reason for patience is linked to growth, linked to the glory of God. And ultimately, each part must keep growing. If you are not growing in knowledge, you will not think rightly when you are under sufferings. So I hope that that will help us to know how to have patience under sufferings. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you, acknowledging, O God, that unless we have knowledge, unless we understand your reason for sufferings in life, Lord, we will not have patience. And Lord, we will eventually bring your name to shame by our life of um, impatience, um, grumbling, murmuring, short-temperedness, self-centeredness. And Father, we pray that in understanding all this, Lord, we would live and accept the things in our life with the aim to glorify you. For we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen.